So saying keep it clean, we got some really, really good news with the Baltimore Ravens, and then we got some really, really bad news, kind of scary news with the Baltimore Ravens. And we're going to talk about all of that. Uh, before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video, and leave a like on the video because y'all have been doing that and it's been helping out a lot, so I appreciate y'all like crazy for that. Now, let's start off with the good news. Do we want to start off on a positive note? We want to start off on a, a more lighter note, a happier note, so we can all smile and whatnot. And, and what that good news is, first and foremost, they're harder to City, they run to Vegas hoodies. Get yours. If you get it by today, you order it before Wednesday, then it's guaranteed to get there before the game on Sunday. So whether you're going to be walking around the stadium, walking around Ravens Walk, or you're going to be walking around the house in your hoodie, you'll be warm and you'll look clean. So make sure you hit up the link in the description and then use code ENGRAVEN to get 20% off your order. they really hooking y'all up. Now, somebody or actually some bodies that could hook us up would be the NFL. And what I mean when I say that? There was a lot of coaching job uh, openings. Now, I can't even say this offseason, but this season, because the season's still going on. Uh, but there's been a lot of guys that got fired. A lot of guys well, came to mutual agreements to part ways. We know what that language really means. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of openings. And with those openings, we were scared. And we still got a little bit of fear in our hearts. But things are looking a little better for Mike McDonald and Todd Munkin. Well, at least in the selfish eyes of Ravens fans. Because you all know we want them to stay. We don't want them to go anywhere. We want them to stay our offensive and defensive coordinators for sure because we've seen the level of consistency and their impact on these Baltimore Ravens in a positive way. However, a lot with a lot of job openings, that would mean increased chances for those two to leave. But a lot of those jobs have been filled. The Patriots, they hired Gerard Mayo. The Raiders, they hired Antonio Pierce. The Titans, they just yesterday, last night, they hired uh, Bengals offensive coordinator Brian Callahan. So that helps the Ravens out in a couple of ways. Uh, the Falcons, it's looking like it's going to be Belichick. That'd be something. Belichick in Atlanta? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be something right there, but we're going to see. We're going to see. I mean, even Gerard Mayo in, in New England and Boston up there. Ooh, woo. So, But anyway, um, <laughs> That would be something, but because they done had a second interview with Belichick and stuff, and they've been talking to him. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, with the Chargers, the Chargers is looking like Jim Harbaugh, because there's been a lot of talk that Michigan gave him an offer, but the Chargers, they're ready to hire him too. Uh, but Jim Harbaugh is looking like he's a lead candidate for the Chargers job. And with that, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll's another one, because it just came out a little bit ago that Pete Carroll could be in the mix for that Chargers job. But. If it's Jim Harbaugh, and this was interesting because it came from Aaron Wilson, who used to cover the Baltimore Ravens a long time ago. He said, how might a potential Jim Harbaugh staff look if he was offered and accepted, accepted the Chargers job? Per league sources, his offensive coordinator could be Greg Roman. I stopped reading after that. I stopped reading after that. Greg Roman. Now, again, Greg Roman, great introductory offensive coordinator. But I think for Justin Herbert, if he <laughs> if he get like if they hire Greg Roman, I think Justin Herbert, he threatened to retire. He said, mm -mm, get me out of here. Nope, I ain't doing it. Uh-uh. No, sir. No. But anyway, um, well, it could help him out. could put a lot less pressure on him because uh, they'll have a good running game. But anyway, um, but John Harbaugh, I mean, excuse me, Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, not John. John, we talk about you later in a little bit. But with Jim Harbaugh, uh, with him expected to get that charge, it's not official yet, but him being a leading candidate, uh, that could remove Mike McDonald and Todd Bunkin from the Chargers opportunity. They're still the commander's job. They're still the Panthers, and they're still the Seahawks as well. So there's still a few openings. So we'll see how that goes. But um, with the Seahawks, uh, Dan Quinn, he was a guy that a lot of people feel like could go to the Seahawks. So that could be potentially one less opportunity for Mike McDonald. And again, I know I, I ain't trying to like, like, I ain't trying to hold Mike McDonald and Todd Bunkin back. Well, we kind of are, but. We want everybody to get their bread. That's one thing that we always talk about on here. I love people getting their bread, getting their opportunity. So if they did end up deciding to leave and get an opportunity elsewhere, it would be great for them. It would be amazing for them, and we would be happy for them. But for our own selfish reasons, we want them to stay because they've had just so so much success and so much of a great impact on these Baltimore Ravens in the time that they've been here. Obviously, Todd Munkin, this is his first year, and then Mike McDonald, this is his second year. Um and it was interesting because somebody in a Ravens flock community on Twitter, um, they asked a really, really good question. They said, if you had to choose one, which coordinator would you rather the Baltimore Ravens keep? Now, I know initially most people say Mike McDonald, Mike McDonald, Mike McDonald, because he has been the hot name uh, around the NFL. Um, but I could see how people could say Todd Munkin as well, because people could be like, well, we want Lamar to have some continuity in this offensive system. But then when you think about it, every time Lamar Jackson gets a new offensive coordinator, he wins an MVP, so hey, maybe it might not be so bad, but 
I, I, I get it. You want consistency. You want to build on that. Just like we've been building off of Mike McDonald with his consistency. He's got a lot better from year one to year two. We want to see the same thing with Todd Munkin because this offense is just getting started. They just getting started. This is their first year. So imagine how they could be another year, another year more comfortable in the system, another year more comfortable in the scheme. Another year with great health. Like, there's just so many different factors that play into it that could benefit the Baltimore Ravens. But something that doesn't benefit the Baltimore Ravens is the bad news that we got to talk about. And Warren Sharp, he highlighted this just today. And it is something that we definitely want to keep an eye on uh, because it's kind of scary. Um, because we know what the Baltimore Ravens are going against the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to be a tough team. The Kansas City Chiefs, they have all the experience in the world. Patrick Mahomes, two-time Super Bowl champion, two-time MVP, has broke a countless amount of records. He is just an amazing player. But we know with Patrick Mahomes, um, he sort of has that Tom Brady effect. I I like to call him, he is the Steph Curry of the NFL because amazing player, could do everything. Uh, You know, with Steph Curry, when he's hitting his threes, when he's doing his finger rolls, doing the layups, everything going good. When everything going good, it's going good, going great, as a matter of fact. But if things ain't going their way, they can get very whiny. They can get very pouty. Uh, And we've seen that with both Steph Curry and we see it with Patrick Mahomes a lot. But something that would not go in the Baltimore Ravens' favor is as follows. Uh, Warren Sharp said, the NFL pushed the panic button. They have a ref in their rotation who is a massive edge to road teams. Road teams win at the number one highest rate with him. He penalizes home teams in ways no other ref does. And he's the one that's going to be calling the Chiefs and Ravens game. So I was like, oh, wow. Now, again, I, I am still very confident in the Baltimore Ravens to take care of business. I do still feel like they will take care of business because this, this has got to be the year. It, it, it has to be. They have so much just that's going in their favor. Uh, they've taken advantage of every single situation. Uh, anything that's been in their way, any obstacle that's been in their way, they've hammered it. They, they, they've gotten it done. So with this one, I see this as just yet another obstacle. And now it's already tough. You're going against a tough team. But it's that much tougher when you got to go against the refs too. Hopefully, they won't have to. Hopefully, they won't have to. And hopefully, this will be uh, Sean Smith, his, his way of calling a, a nice, clean game. But we'll see. Anyway, continuing, he said, uh, it was fascinating. It was a fascinating decision to put Sean Smith on the Chiefs game. In the last three years, with other refs, the home teams win at 55.9%. But with Smith, the home wins drop. Uh, to 40.8%. With other refs, the home teams cover the spread at 50.1%. But with Smith, the home cover rates drop to 37%. He said, is this merely coincidental? Or is there a reason why home teams lose so often with him uh, than uh, with other refs? And Warren Sharp said, he worked with NFL ref stats and uncovered some wild penalty trends for Smith. Uh, these trends certainly help, the, help drive the result of home teams losing as often as they do. And he said, uh, how do road teams win so many games with Smith? Example number one, false start penalties. The NFL averaged the last three years 4.6 more penalties on the road team. And he said that makes sense because of crowd noise and uh, how that would hurt a road team more. However, uh, under Sean Smith, the referee uh, that's calling this Ravens Chiefs game, in the last three years, the 34.8 more penalties have been called on the home team team and in the article he said that uh it details out many classes of penalties which are often judgment calls specifically with roughing the passer and unnecessary roughness he said league-wide these are called a slight degree between seven to twelve percent more on the road team so that's the norm but with sean smith he calls between 37 and 71 percent more on the home teams that is such a wide gap like, you go from 7 to 12% more, that, okay, that's 5%, but you go from 37 to 71% more, what is that, 34 more percent? Like, whoa, that's a, that's a wide margin. And he said that the NFL had many refs they could have assigned to Casey in Baltimore. They chose one who historically has called things pro the road team. This doesn't mean Casey will get the calls, but as with every ref, it is interesting to note his penalty trends. And that is a very, very good point. And just something to think about. And again, we already knew the Ravens, they, they had to bring the A game. They got to be on point. They got to take care of business regardless of who the referees are. And I know you want to say, oh, you can't really worry about that. And, and yeah, Ravens got more important stuff to worry about. But you would just hate, hate to see stuff like that impact the game because we've seen it. Again, we, we've seen it happen for the Ravens where it's impacted. We've seen it happen against the Ravens where it's impacted the game. Because it could be a big play. Oh, it's a big chunk yard play. They get a 35-yard run or 45-yard pass. And it's like, oh, yeah, let's go, baby. Then you turn around 
and it's a yellow flag sitting right there. In so many games, that has changed everything. That can be a drive killer. That can be a momentum shifter. And it can just kill the vibes of a team instantly. So now, along with the Kansas City Chiefs, the Ravens have one more obstacle that they got to get through. But we are very confident that these Baltimore Ravens, they can and they will get that job done regardless.